Hi there, it's your favorite Zendesk consultant in the universe, Dominic, the CX guy. <laughs> uh, hi, welcome to today's lesson. This is actually the last one out of the series of Zendesk Setup. So yeah, happy you made it. If you made it this far, oh my God, you're a champion. I, yeah, you, you're basically on your own. You're about to do great things and uh, yeah, only, only, it's only up from here. <laughs> I've been um, just finished reading up uh, Zendesk's 2022 CX trends and oh my God. So it's such, so many companies are lagging behind in actually understanding what good customer service is and actually how important it is. Like most companies still have the idea of, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Customer service, mm -hmm, yeah, we should do it. <laughs> All this time when customer service is the direct link to your product, it's a direct way to improve your product, it's a direct way to upsell, cross-sell, and yeah, keep customers engaged and happy to be with you still. So uh, it's, it's mind boggling that I think around maybe 60, no, yes, more than 60% of people are going to walk away from your business if they don't like your customer service. So, oh man, <laughs> they're just going to go across the street to talk to someone else who's going to give them meaningful experiences, right? So somebody who's going to be good at support, authentic, and interested in it. So yeah, you're not going to be able to fool people for much longer. You know, uh, they might buy from you now, but if they're unhappy, they're just going to switch to someone else because there's bound to be someone else doing whatever you're doing with your business. So yeah, anyways, that's beside the point, I digress. So today's the final lesson, which is not necessarily a lesson, it's just a Let's say a, an overview of what we've done and just a list of checkboxes that according to what your project specs are, where we would go through them one by one and make sure that you have everything set up before you, move, you go live with Zendesk or not just going live with Zendesk, but yeah, uh, if it's also between, for example, uh, if you've been using Zendesk already, it's just a checklist to see if everything has been set up according to um, the scope of work. So let me pull up my uh, list of things that we have to, here we go, of the process that we went through, which was amazing. Uh, and I thank you for your attention again. I know this must not have been easy because training videos are boring as hell. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the more diligent you are, the better results you get. So I, yeah, probably not telling you anything you don't already know. Um, but you know, there's many people who say, yeah, I know I shouldn't. I know I should work out. I know I should, I don't know, sleep well. I know I should eat well but nobody does it. So it's exactly like this in customer service. Everyone knows like, yeah, I should do these things, but they don't. So anyways, share screen. Hopefully you can see it. So this is the list that we've gone through, right? So the very quickly about the process of the Zena setup, right? So we have a learn and discovery about your company, what your company does, why it does it the way it does. Um, then we have some homework for you. Then we collect some use cases, business flows, whatever you want to call them. And then we have discovery sessions where we discuss those and we put them into graphics and then we translate them into Zendesk features. After that, we take all of the information and go to the design process where we dive into your Zendesk. A general walkthrough of what you'll be using in Zendesk. People, so customers and agents, tickets, like everything related to uh, collecting data about your customers in order to help them uh, to help solve their requests. Uh, then, um, and also productivity, of course. So then channels, email, um, chats, agent workspace, social messaging, whatever you're going to use. So also in the CX trends, the requests requests for customer uh, service have risen to about 14%, more than 20, yeah, from the previous year. So yeah, you have to do that. 
And then continuing on the business rules, trigger automations, SLAs, and then yesterday's lesson was on reporting. So let's mark that as done. Collaborative configuration is something which we do together, right? So um, in each one of these, I give you homework usually because we want you to be autonomous. I give you homework and then you um, go do your homework and then you come back and we say, yeah, let's see if it works. Let's see if it does what it's supposed to do. Is it working well? Is it tested? Does it perform the results that it's meant to do, that it's meant to have? If it doesn't, then we fix it, we tweak it, and then it's done. Also, collaborative configuration sometimes means that if you're a larger organization, which is usually the case and uh, what I've been working on with so far, is you have yeah, a lot of agents, so you have over 50, 100, 200, and then you have so many processes and you simply can't do that yourself. You need help. And yeah, that's when we come in, we take over and we implement those processes. But you have to do your homework because you want to be able to make changes in the whenever you want and make sure that nothing crashes because I know that's one of your biggest fears, right? Everything's going to crash and uh, if you don't have processes that are simple that you understand it's gonna get weird technical assistance is something that we do with for example help you with the single sign-on um, we help you with uh, setting up your email so it doesn't have zendesk in it um, we set up your url for your support site with the guide so it doesn't say help dot whatever your company name is, .sendus.com, right? So it has a more um, unifying customer experience. So users know what they're talking, users know exactly what that is, uh, that your company is seen in the name and not Zendesk, which confuses them. Technical assistance. Yeah, so that's like technical assistance. And there's a few more things, of course, that integration with uh, different services, like uh, with APIs and webhooks and such. Uh, we'll get into that because that's more technical. <laughs> then we have the launch and then we have the handover. So in order to do the launch, we have to do this account uh, check. Well, it's not a check, but it's a checklist of things that we uh, we needed to set in order to have our Zendesk work well and be ready to welcome people in the customer service uh, system, right? So let's talk about the launch customers. Um, so Zendesk configuration checklist. So this is your checklist. And again, it's tailored to uh, however your business is going and whatever channels you have and you're supporting. So you have for support, for example, and then we have users, adding users, right? So we have some information about that. We have an article, we have some best practices, then we have a video about it as well. Then we have some, yeah, some steps and statuses for this. Has it been started? Is it in progress? Testing completed on hold, not applicable. We obviously have this and I've covered it um, yeah, in the process video, which is at the very beginning. But anyway, this is the closing one, which I wanted to do a quick um, a quick video on. So adding groups, defining custom roles, business and business schedules, uh, user fields, organizational fields, creating organizations, of course. Then with brands, add support addresses, uh, um, custom ticket fields for each brand, ticket forms, and then, yeah, um, security settings uh, for um, for the uh, general account or for end users as well. So extensions, what apps you could use, uh, third-party integrations if you have backend integrations, um, targets for external teams to reach out. You can do this. This means that uh, I have several videos about this uh, anyway. So you set up targets, meaning that uh, if a ticket comes in and it just like you set up a trigger. Um, for example, if a set of conditions are met, then you perform an action, but not in Zendesk, outside of Zendesk. You send an email, you ping an API, you, uh, I don't know, you can even ping, for example, Basecamp or uh, Trello or whatever you want. So it's, uh, you can do so much, so many things. Um, and uh, yeah, 
I don't want to get into the ins, ins and outs of it right now because that's not important. Yeah, create triggers, create automations, create SLAs, create views, create macros, single sign-on, add agents, train your agents, imports, end users, uh, active email forwarding, uh, set up embed the web widget, set up social media messaging channels, et cetera, and then the channels that you have. And then for guide as well, the same you know checklist of going through things and uh, yeah, making sure everything has been set up chats and then obviously whatever channels that you're supporting um would follow through here okay so i don't know that's uh, that's it this is uh, what i wanted to bring across it's not like uh, yeah it's not something you haven't seen so far it's just uh, yeah something which i wanted you to check back on to and to understand that this would be like a logical, normal process, right? So we'd go over this checklist at the end and say, yep, done or not done, or yeah, why isn't it done? Let's see. And the very nice thing about it is because you have this list and then you have your business requirements, which you can roll back on and say, hey, you know, we said we wanted to have blah, blah thing. Well, I don't see it in this list. So you done fucked up, dear consultant which is not ideal, right? So <laughs> you that again, business uh, requirements are a way to keep your consultant accountable, right? So yeah, oh, I should make a blog post about this. Hmm. Yeah, definitely have to do it. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, that's essentially it. Uh, keeping accountable for what you set out to do. And if it's being achieved, like everything that you are you have set out to do as a business and uh, what you're trying to achieve with Zenda. So obviously reporting, for example, and uh, having efficient flows is going to only start from here, right? But you at least are on the verge of having like an efficient way to start your customer service system. So I hope this was helpful. I love you. I can't say how much I'm happy that you've done this and I want you to please subscribe I want you to please write to me and uh, yeah I'll see you around bye <laughs>